The first computer strategy game I ever played, Desert Rats. While I'm working on a longer movie, I thought I would do a video about the first strategy game I ever played back in the 80s. It was a turn-based game with an innovative gameplay that has some features I miss in most modern strategy games. Back in 1985 I had a ZX Spectrum computer containing a whopping 48 kilobytes of memory and a tape player for external storage. It was a good budget computer, especially if you liked games, and 13 year old me loved games. In 1985 I bought a game called Desert Rats by Case Computer Simulations, or simply CCS. This was and is a turn-based strategy game about the war in North Africa, from the German intervention in 1941 all the way through to El Alamein, ending somewhere in December 1942, taking place in Libya and Egypt. It was advanced for its time. It handled the supply situation so unique for the desert warfare. You had H. You had headquarter units handling supplies, and your units could run out of fuel and ammunition, decreasing their effectiveness and basically making them stand still. You could divide divisions and combine them again, and it modeled the effectiveness of different kinds of units. For example, artillery was good against tanks, but less effective against infantry by itself. The manual had a nice description of each battle, and you could choose between five smaller scenarios, or play the whole desert war. The five scenarios were Enter Rommel, Battle Axe, Operation Crusader, the Battle of Gazala, and finally El Alamein. It was a very good strategy game for 1985. It had one innovative solution that I think most modern games in the turn-based category lacks today. We have either turn-based games, where first you do your moves, attack, defend, so on, and when you are finished, the opponent does its move. The other category is real-time strategy, where mouse speed becomes somewhat more important than the tactics. This game did it differently, as did the other two games in the same series. It is turn-based, so you have time to plan your move. You select your units, decide where the unit should go, if it should attack, fortify, defend, and so on. When you are done, it's the opponent's turn, who plans its moves. When both are done, then the actual turn is played. So the computer moves all the units simultaneously. Which means that uh, you might be surprised. For example, you move one unit uh, west, it's free, no enemy units, and suddenly an enemy unit is there blocking. Realistic way to show how combat occurs. So your nice attack to encircle the enemy might suddenly be blocked by an enemy unit that just moves in your way. I find this more realistic than the pure turn-based games. They become too sequential. First I do my thing, then the opponent does its thing, and we never move at the same time. This game managed to do that. The game was very fun in the 80s, and today, well, what can you say? It's a, it's a very old game. But already then, it lacked some details. The units were too big, for example, for the attack against Torbrook. It basically became one division attacking another division. And the real attack against Torbrook is down to battalion level. The same problem is with the Battle of El Alamein. It's just two big units to capture the, the details of that battle. Uh, the graphics are really bad by today's standards, but back then they worked. And after all, this kind of turn-based strategy game is basically moving squares. And uh, you have the squares in this game, so fulfill that at least. Uh, the interface is not great, there is no mouse support, and you had to actually go through each unit, even if you wanted to move it or not, you had to go through each unit for every turn. When you have many units, that can be quite annoying. You could use a joystick if you had one, but uh, still not the same as having a mouse. 
The worst thing about the game today is the sound. It is annoying like hell. The beeps just drives you crazy. But back then it was how games sounded and I remember thinking that they had a differentiating sound if it was infantry or uh, armored units attacking, which I thought was very cool. It gave you an idea of what was happening as the battles were played out before your eyes. Uh, the computer AI is not an AI at all, it's just rule-based movements. So playing against a human was the way to go. However, the, the computer is not that much worse than some modern games, who are also rule-based, even though they say they are AI. The problem with rule-based is it's very difficult to do planning. And as if you play against an opponent, you want to have the planning of the opponent, because that makes the battles more fluent. However, I think this game, it had 48 kilobytes to play with, and what they managed to do with that amount of memory is really impressive. I mean, I can't think about anything that takes just 48 kilobytes today. Uh, there were no remote multiplayer options back in 85, and then it was not a problem because internet was still years away, so you didn't really miss that. Uh, you could play two players, but you had to be at the same computer. Today, the game is more of a nostalgia than actual fun gameplay. The combination of turn-based with all movements happening at the same time, is something I would have loved to see in, for example, Garagrigsby's War in the East. It brings on a realism that pure turn-based games lacks. Uh, CCS Studios did two other games of the same type, Arnheim, that came out before this game, and that was not a fun game at all. The units were too big, you missed the details that were so important for the Operation Market Garden. The following game after this one was called Vulcan, and uh, that handled the war in Tunisia. And technically it was the best game in the series. It has more functionality, it has a better graphic. But the gameplay in Tunisia was slightly more uh, static than the war in the desert in Libya and Egypt. So it was not as fun to play as the desert rats. Anyway, that was the first strategy game I played, and it is the game that hooked me on computer-based strategy games. If you like this video, like and subscribe, and see you next time.